All right, so uh, we want to talk about SmartLink. So SmartLink is our remote software that allows the radio to connect to what we call a client, which would be Maestro or a PC or an iPhone or iPad, uh, remotely over the network. So this makes remote operation plug and play. And uh, so all you need to do to set up SmartLink is create a username and password. Um, once you create a username and password, uh, anywhere you log in, from anywhere over the wide area network, you'll be able to access your radio remotely. Uh, so for this demonstration, I'm going to connect to a radio in Atlanta. And we're actually running some pre-released code. And I'll show you more on that later. Uh, but if we click Run here. We're going we're gonna to talk about the pre-release code here in a minute. Yeah, that's about right. what it does. <laughs> that's right. You're getting a sneak peek. Right. All right. So this is now connected to a radio in Atlanta, Georgia. This is coming from these signals are being received from the antenna in Atlanta. And you notice that it operates just as if you were operating it locally. So very smooth. You know, I wish you all the best, and uh, let's try and shadow a museum ship's weekend. Just like that. Uh, at least, uh, so there's no, no difference in the operation between local and remote. So how is it, or is, is it easy to tell, or is it not easy to tell? If I was to sit down at the radio and someone else had been operating it, how would I know that I'm connected remotely right now? Yeah, so what you'll do is you'll actually click, well, first off, it, there's an indicator that says you're connected to SmartLink. So this little blue indicator Okay, yes, I see that. Yeah, shows okay. that you're connected to SmartLink. Okay. But uh, in the menu section, you can click on radio, and you can actually see who you're connected to. Uh, so I've got uh, the radio here's nickname Atlanta, but gotcha. uh, this is the radio serial number, um, the model number. You can enter a call sign, that sort of thing. Uh, now, another thing I like to mention about this is uh, many people are interested in the network usage. Right. So, um, typical operation when we're running at full bandwidth as far as uh, the refresh rate on the pan adapter and the waterfall, uh, we're running at about it's under 1.5 megabits per second. So, it's very reasonable. Uh, but uh, some people will ask, well, can I run it on a cellular hotspot? And they're concerned about their data limits. So you can actually turn that down, because a lot of that data is being driven by the refresh rate on the pan, pan adapter on the waterfall. So okay. it's basically just sending images over and over and over again. Right. So you can turn that down. And just for this illustration, I'll turn them all the way down to like a frame per second. And uh, you'll get an uh, impression of how low the bandwidth usage is. So that's at under 200 kilobits per second. And you're still getting you know, the same audio that you would be. Right. So the audio itself. Uh, takes about you know, 80 kilobits or so. So second. I guess you could use that in a mobile application. You mm -hmm. don't really want to be looking at the screen in a, while you're driving down yeah, the highway probably, anyway, probably right? Not, yeah. <laughs> but I know guys that yeah. operate CW and they do it all by ear and then they have a key that's sitting over there on the right side and mm -hmm. they just kind of key their CW key with uh, while they're driving. Right. Yeah, so we actually have some individuals who have installed these in mobile application. OK. Um, and so the, the unit actually has a, a visa mount on the back where people have uh, converted that, done a uh, visa to RAM mount conversion. Yes. So they can yeah. mount it in their yeah. car. Yeah, So sure. I've seen that application. Uh, it's very flexible in that way. Good, good. I've, yeah. got one of the, I've got a RAM mount in my truck right now. That's right. It doesn't have anything on it, but it's yeah. there. <laughs> well, it's I'm actually, waiting for a maestro. Right, right yeah, it is. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So good, OK. All right, so you're going to get a little sneak peek of some unreleased software. Uh, so coming out later this month, hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have uh, Smart SDR version 3 of our software. And in that will be a major new feature, which we call MultiFlex. And uh, so the thing with MultiFlex is uh, typically with our radio, uh, you can connect to it, as we mentioned before, from a client. So a client would be a maestro, uh, well, you know, a PC, a uh, iPhone, iPad, uh, Mac client. Uh, each of those are a client. And so the radio could accept one client at a time. Uh, so with MultiFlex, what we're doing is we're actually allowing you to connect to a single radio from two clients at the same time. So for this illustration, I've got my two maestros. Uh, and I have actually named these maestros. I've got a left maestro and a right maestro. So these radio or these maestros are both connected to this 6700 that I have in my rack here, okay. And the interesting thing about this is that they both act as if they're two independent radios. 
So I can actually have a VFO A and B on uh, both my left maestro and on my right maestro. And both are operating independently. Um, and they can be on different bands. Okay, right. so uh, I can actually even bring up a second spectrum display on this maestro and be operating, uh, be monitoring two bands at the same time. Uh, let's say I've got um, uh, 80 and uh, 40 meters here. And then I'm monitoring 20 meters over here. These are acting as two independent radios. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, another neat thing about this is uh, that, uh, of course, you, you have multiple resources that can be shared in this radio. So for example, the 6700 has up to eight receivers. Eight receivers, yeah. yeah. These are what now, we call. The, the, the maestros only do two at a time, right? Maestro will only display two at a time. Okay. Okay, but uh, on your desktop you can display all eight. On your desktop eight. you can do all eight, yeah. Right. Okay. That's so, right. but the, the nice thing about this is you can share these resources between uh, two operators. Right. Okay. So, uh, right now I've got two and one. Of course, I can bring up a second one here. So, I'm utilizing four of these receivers. Um, now, there is one resource that you'll actually share on the radio. Now, the radio itself only has a single transmitter. Right. So, okay. the two operators will share that transmitter. So, if you notice here, if I were to key up on left maestro, on the right maestro, it'll show that the left maestro currently owns the transmitter. Okay. Gotcha. Yep, I and see that. And it's tied up, so once I release it, it's now available to Right Maestro. And once I key up here, Right Maestro now owns the transmitter. The first thing I see is that MOX bot button red, light up red. Right. So that's uh, so it tells you on the screen and on the button. That's right. So we're the idea was to clearly indicate that the radio was in transmit and what was actually occurring. Right. So you actually know that the other operators uh, controlling the transmit. This is important because. Uh, as we mentioned before, with SmartLink, you don't actually have to be physically present with the radio. Mm -hmm. So these maestros could be geographically distributed anywhere. So this maestro could be in one part of the country, this maestro could be in another country altogether, and this radio could be on some remote station uh, on an antenna phone. Nice. So it's very flexible in how you can configure it, and it opens the door for some really neat applications. So uh, one of the unique ones that I came across at a trade show was there were a number of husband-wife duos who okay. both were hands, who liked to operate radio uh, but really couldn't operate at the same time or uh, they uh, have to have two separate radios and two separate antennas uh, to be able to play radio at the same time. So this was a really interesting application for them because they could have one, let's say 6600 and two maestros, and they could both be operating the radio at the same time using the same antenna. Um, so this is really uh, a great application there. Uh, another thing we're seeing is that there are guys who are in antenna-restricted HOAs, right. or you have uh, guys who have moved into retirement communities, retirement homes, yeah. that sort of thing, who still want to be able to play radio. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of thing, a lot of what we're seeing is there are guys going in together to buy land, to put up antennas, or you have uh, buddies who are, uh, who are sharing a radio where one guy has uh, you know, the ability to put up antennas, the others do not. Sure. So they'll, they'll put in a radio together and uh, share that radio remotely. Okay. And so Multiflex will allow those two operators to use the radio at the same time. I just thought of something interesting. If I have, if, uh, if I have my own, um, what do you call the account where you log in? SmartLink. The SmartLink account. Mm -hmm. If I have my own SmartLink account, and my buddy has a SmartLink account, and he has an antenna farm. Mm -hmm. Can I log out? Can I easily log out of my Maestro and log sure. into his account if he shares it with me? And yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So you could either put both of those radios on the same SmartLink account yeah. if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah. You like, can do that. Yeah. Uh, we know people who do that. Okay. Um, or you could have two separate SmartLink accounts. Okay. The deal is, though, is right now there's one uh, one account associated with a single radio at the moment. So that means that uh, if you are wanting to share your radio, you need to be comfortable sharing your credentials with them, so your username or your password. Okay. So you wouldn't want that to be some secure password that you use for your bank account. Yeah, so right, to speak, right, 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 totally. So, and you definitely want to trust the operator you're giving it to because you are still considered the control operator. Correct, yeah, right? that's, yeah there's, there's a bunch of questions about remote operation exactly. in, in a lot of the tests. So okay, all right, yeah. makes sense. So another uh, key application for this would be for contesters. Okay, so for example, uh, there are contesters who would want to do uh, what's called a multi-single. 
Yes. All right, so that's two operators operating on a single band. Mm -hmm. And typically in a multi-single contest application, uh, you can only have one transmitter on the band at a time. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can't have two, two transmitters operating at the same time. So uh, with our radio, since there is only one transmitter, right. we're automatically handling that for you. So you don't have to deal with a, some sort of complex TX lockout um, or any of that. Uh, and this dramatically reduces the cost and complexity of setting up that multi-single station. So you have one radio, which is using an antenna, right? Uh, and this is a big benefit because typically in a multi-single, one guy is, is stuck with the lesser of two antennas. Right. Okay. So it's a big deal for, for this that they can both use the best antenna mm -hmm. and they can use it at the same time. Uh, so both operators can be using the same radio. That dramatically simplifies uh, the setup of the station. Um, and, uh, and actually switching between different types of contests is extremely easy. There's no uh, reorganizing of cables. You don't need complex splitters and cat cables and all that. Okay. Um, so it's a very powerful application for that as well. So. That's pretty much multiflex, uh, and we're targeting to release it, as I said, at the end of March. And that, the end of March, okay. So we're the, the time of this recording is uh, the first week and second week in March, and um, that'll just be a direct firmware download from that screen that's you showed right. us earlier. That's right. That's so all that you have to do. That's right. So one of the key things that uh, people ask us about is uh, they've heard that we charge for software. Okay. okay, and so uh, I think this would be actually a good thing to talk about. Okay, um, so our software is kind of, we kind of handle it like uh, the PC world did for a long time, where uh, you buy buy a box, and on the box comes the major release version of whatever operating system. Let's yes. say it's Windows. Okay, um, so uh, with that purchase, you get that operating system and any subsequent point releases that include features and bug fixes. Right. Okay, and um, so there will be a periodic updates on those. Uh, when the next major version release comes out, that will be an optional paid upgrade. Yes. Windows 8 to Windows 10 as an example. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, so uh, we do a similar thing. So with the radio, you get the current version of the operating system included in the box and any subsequent point releases on that. So uh, for example, uh, let's say you bought a radio with version 2 on it. Uh, version 2.1, version 2.2, 2.3, those will all be included in the purchase price. Mm -hmm. uh, version 3 would be an optional purchase upgrade. Okay. And we typically charge $199 for that. Okay. And these, uh, the way that we've structured this is that uh, the idea is that we're motivated as a company to make it compelling, right? So there's not going to be just, um, you know, little tweaks and things in that sort of release. There's going to be major new functionality that's never been done before. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, one other thing that we're doing right now is any radios that were purchased after October 1st of 2018 are going to get a free upgrade to uh, version 3 anyways. Okay. So, um, you know, if you're looking at purchasing a radio anytime prior to our release, you're going to already have a free upgrade to that anyways, and you will get uh, 3.1, 3.2, 3.2, 3.3. All those will be included in the purchase price. And we generally come out with probably six or seven updates a year. Okay. Um, and then major releases are usually going to be about every 16 months or so. Okay. Um, will the, the version 2 that w you're on now, uh, mm -hmm. will it continue to be updated for a specified amount of time? Yes, actually, that's a great question. So after version 3 is released, we actually, uh, the next scheduled release will be another version 2 release. Okay. Which, uh, we've, uh, in the development of version 3, we identified some uh, things that we felt like we wanted to roll back. Okay. So it'll include those rollback uh, kind of uh, fixes and um, some tweaks on performance, that sort of thing. Uh, plus, also, we plan to include a couple of little uh, extra uh, benefits to version 2. So that will actually come out after version 3 is available. Okay. And that may be, we're, we're not exact, exactly sure how many releases that will be. That might be uh, a couple of releases. Uh, so to summarize, the answer is yes, we'll continue development on okay. version 2. But the version 2 and 3 do, will they work on some of the older models that are no longer in production? So uh, all of the Flex 6000 series will be uh, applicable for the version 3 upgrade. Gotcha. So this is one of the things that we were intentional about with our Flex 6000 series is that we built it such that the architecture is scalable. Gotcha. So um, these radios will have long legs. So the only differences between the radios are uh, what's uh, as far as the hardware inside. Uh, that enables different features. So um, uh, we can go into that a little bit later when we're talking about features. Sure. 
the differences in the models. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, okay, that's good. I think we're good with uh, that part. So this is going to be showing FT8, FT8 yeah, okay. on uh, with a multiflex setup. Okay. So Go ahead. Additional, You're ready. additional uh, demonstration of multiflex is you could have you could still have the two maestros. Uh, one is operating sideband, but uh, one of the things I wanted to demonstrate is that uh, the other operator can be operating digital modes. So right now I'm connected to WSJT on my desktop, uh, connected to this maestro here, which is supplying audio uh, over the Ethernet uh, mm -hmm. to the PC, which is being picked up by WSJT. So we're actually decoding uh, uh, FT8 on WSJT, um, and all of this is happening over the Ethernet. So this could be remote as well, uh, uh -huh. or local. So both operators could be operating different uh, digital modes, okay. or uh, you know you could be uh, operating, um, you know, let's say uh, CW skimmer on one station and um, WSJT on another. So gotcha. Very flexible in that operation as well. Excellent. Now let me ask you this: the transmit button that we talked about earlier is not lighting up when the screen, the WSJT screen moves. So is it right. transmitting? It's not currently transmitting. Okay. Uh, I'm not uh, at the moment. I'm not currently set up to transmit. Okay. Uh, okay. But so it's not because because FT8 you can kind of walk you can kind of set it up and walk away mm -hmm. from it, un which makes That's it right. kind of. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can uh, you could click on one of these, uh, double click on one of these, and then it will enable a cue so that's going on. So, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then and then you'll see the transmit buttons light up mm -hmm. on both my strips. Yeah. When it keys up, it'll uh, indicate a transmit on the mox and the two. Gotcha. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's really really cool. There's a lot of neat. Um, I mean, there's there's just a multitude of things you can do with that. Yeah. Uh, in different places, kind of here and there.